Welcome to Reverse Reset Restore. I'm Sally and I am in pursuit of living an authentic, healed life. In this podcast, I share experiences, ideas, concepts and strategies that have helped me in the personal restoration journey that is me. This week, we're looking at five strategies to change our thinking. Change comes from within. Welcome back, dear friend. Last episode, we talked about how our thoughts are the stories we tell ourselves and how we choose to allow our stories to take us out of living in the here and now, often because we're too caught up in that which does not exist, the past or the future. For those of you who are aware of cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, which is a type of therapy practiced by most psychologists and counselors, you may be familiar with the CBT triangle of thoughts, feelings and behavior. I've posted an image to my Instagram with some links to discover this model more. Basically, the CBT triangle suggests that these three have a symbiotic relationship to each other and overlap. To me, it's kind of like the what came first, the chicken or the egg scenario. Because in this model, it is suggested that our thoughts can create our feelings and our feelings can create our thoughts. Our thoughts can determine our behavior and our behaviors can create our thoughts or our feelings. And our emotions can create both thoughts or actions. This interconnectedness via this model suggests that by changing one of these three points, you effectively will create change in the other two areas as well. I'm bringing this up because I think people can overlook how true change requires thoughts, feelings and actions to shift. The strategies I'm going to share over the next three episodes reflect the idea that change needs to occur in all three areas. I'm bringing this up because I think people can overlook how true change requires thoughts, feelings and actions to shift. The strategies I'm going to share over the next three episodes reflect the idea that change needs to occur in all three of these areas. So I've broken them down into strategies for thought, strategies for feelings and strategies for action or behavior. These are just some of the strategies that I've used in my life to develop new ways of thinking or changing habits to help create the life I want and the stories I want to tell myself now. Over these three episodes, I'm going to share 15 strategies with you. We'll focus on five strategies per episode so that we can take our time to look at each one and how they can be applied to thoughts, feelings or actions. This will allow you to choose maybe just one per each area to try out for yourself before adding any others. My suggestion would be to not try to implement them all at once. That's why in the last episode, I didn't try to overload you with any of them. I left you to simply become conscious of the thoughts that you have allowed to have free reign in your mind and thus your life. Often when we want to change something, we want to change everything and we want it to happen yesterday. And that mindset can set us up to fail, to get discouraged or even quit before we've reached the breakthrough we were after in our quest to change. What we're looking to do here in this podcast is allow for space and time to test new ideas and concepts out. There's no need to try to rush the process or make it happen instantaneously. There's a cheese advert where I come from which states, good things take time. So let go of any expectation you might feel or want or need to see immediate change. I know that this can be a challenge because we live in a I want it now society and it can be really hard to shift away from that expectation. I know from my own personal experience I've had far more success in changing my life when I've come from a place of love and kindness and surrender rather than expectation and judgment and hurry up, I want it now. Focusing on implementing one or two things at a time instead of trying to do a massive overhaul of my thoughts, feelings and behaviours all at once 
has allowed me to really cement these practices into my life. Ultimately, what we're trying to achieve here is permanent change, right? And we don't have to be in a rush about it. It's not a race. It's not a competition. It's simply coming to the understanding that you're going to love yourself enough to grow. Each of these strategies can be adapted to suit your specific situation. As I've mentioned in my previous episodes, one of my coping strategies used to be eating my feelings. Now, how I've turned that around, or at least minimized it in my life, because you know I am human and I still have slip-ups, is by adopting these tactics. Some of these are practical tools and some are emotional or mental techniques to change the harmful habits we've grown accustomed to. Because I needed to change the narrative of the damaging stories I was telling myself, I began to focus on changing my thoughts. So we're going to begin the first of our three strategy episodes on the area of our thoughts. This is by far not an extensive list of strategies available. And there are many helpful books, articles, blogs, Uh, YouTube content that will offer many other types of tips and techniques to help you change your stories. I'm just going to share a few that have made a difference for me and invite you to consider picking one or two to try out for yourself. So let's get started on looking at creating change through strategies for thought. The first strategy seems like an obvious one. But we've often been oblivious for so long that it can be one that requires time and patience and creating awareness for to become a part of our daily life. It's notice the noise. Notice the noise is about becoming aware of what your thoughts are saying and how noisy they can be when trying to keep you from finding peace. That internal chatter that just persistently nags at you at 2 a.m., or incessantly whines at you throughout the day, just just always there in the peripheral of your mind. That noise is keeping you from your ability to live your life in a conscious way. When you begin to notice the noise, you can then begin to choose something different. Isn't that exciting? You don't have to be pushed and pulled by the thoughts escalating in your mind. As a recovering overthinker, this was life-changing for me. For years, I had entertained so many unnecessary thoughts, allowing them to settle in and disturb my mind and create havoc in so many areas of my life. As the French philosopher Michel de Montaigne so aptly put it, my life has been full of terrible misfortunes, most of which never happened. These terrible misfortunes that we catastrophize in our minds begin with the noise of unbridled thought. So many of us live our lives unconsciously, unaware or perhaps avoiding the noise in our mind. Ignorance is bliss after all. But once your eyes, or in this case ears, are open, you can't ignore it quite the same. I think many people want to live unconsciously And the giants of the modern day living, corporations, governments, social media, etc. are pretty happy to oblige. There is a lot of choice out there, especially in internet land, to keep us oblivious to our own internal power. But when we notice the noise of that internal content, we can no longer remain unconscious to our suffering. Well... I guess we can if that is what we choose to do. In the book Brave New World by Adolf Huxley, everyone has been conditioned to keep any thoughts and emotions that don't fit within their society at bay. This is done through the use of Soma, a feel-good drug to keep from ever feeling or thinking anything unpleasant. From the very first chapter, the reader realizes that this utopian world is one where humankind has been controlled and ordered by their genetic predisposition into alphas or deltas, epsilons and betas, etc. And each have brought into this way of living as though their society makes them the best version of humanity. As the director says, all conditioning aims at that making people like their unescapable social destiny. As long as we don't notice the noise, or at least avoid it and tune it out, 
we remain conditioned to this unescapable social destiny. You can only make a choice to change. Once you are aware, you can make a change. If you're listening to this podcast, there is a good chance you're already on the road of self-recovery. Or perhaps you've just become more aware of that chatter clattering around in your mind. All the negative self-talk and the fears and the worries that have been sustaining you. Now that you've noticed the noise, you have a choice to make. It's the same choice Neo has to make in the Matrix. Swallow the blue pill and return to oblivion. Or take the red pill and go down the rabbit hole of restoration. Our second strategy is flip the script. Change your internal language. How often do you tell yourself, I can't, or I'm useless, or I'm not as good as, insert whoever you want to here. If you start to pay attention to these malicious little sentences you construct throughout the day, you'd actually be shocked at just how often they might appear. I know when I started to be aware of just how often negative phrases would cross my lips or run rampant in my mind, I realized just how much suffering I was creating for myself and I totally brought into it. So I needed to change the language of my internal dialogue. One of the easiest ways to help change your thoughts is the use of affirmations, especially if they are ones that reflect directly the current diatribe you're running around in your mind. So if you find yourself saying something like, I can't, you could write down variations in the opposite. I can, or of course I can, or I can do all things. If you have a specific Goliath in your life that always seems to draw out of you and I can't, or other phrase, challenge it. David took out a giant with a pebble and a slingshot. You can be the David in your own life. Take down the giants in your mind one pebble at a time. Daily affirmations are the pebbles I use against the Goliaths of my own thoughts especially when I notice myself returning to thoughts and feelings that are designed to bring me low. I use affirmations in a variety of ways. I have digital affirmations on my computer and phone screens, a whole board and my Pinterest account dedicated to positive thinking quotes and affirmations, and I've written them onto my physical vision boards. I even have my phone alarm set to different times of the day during the week to remind me to stop and speak something good over my life. Quotes can serve as affirmations as well, and I often will reflect on how a good quote can be applied in my daily life. That's one of the reasons I end each episode with a quote. I like to have affirmations somewhere where I can physically see them so that they can act as a visual reminder to speak different words over my life and flip the script in my head. I currently have about a hundred post-it notes lined up on my bathroom wall. Depending on what thoughts might be encroaching in my headspace, they range from my body image and weight release goals to empowered thinking and ways of being. It's important to speak them out loud. Even if I don't feel in the mood to do so, I speak them out loud. In fact, that's when I know I must speak them out and loudly. After the first five or six post-it notes, I begin to notice a change. There's a change in my body, my voice, my thoughts and my energy levels. And then suddenly I am proclaiming them over my life with energy and excitement. I begin to expand on the affirmation, speaking it over my life in more in-depth ways and the ways that it applies to me. My brain is firing up, feeling good, shaking off the dregs of its previous thinking and stepping into a belief assisted by what I am now telling it. It seems like a weird thing to do at first, but most things are until you make them a habit, right? So trust me, if you start practicing telling yourself affirmations every day, you will definitely flip the script in your mind. Start with a few. Make them meaningful or ones that you know are opposite to the thoughts you're currently entertaining. Try to write your affirmations in the present tense and speak them out loud whenever you can. I use a lot of I am statements like I am enough, I am abundant, 
I am a creator. I am loving. Consistently practicing them will encourage your thoughts to train themselves to think differently. And if you are thinking differently, you'll start feeling and acting differently too. The third strategy is known as reframing. Now this is a technique that counsellors may use to help their clients shift their view of a problem, person or situation in their life. You could think of it as uh, walking in someone else's shoes, as the idea behind reframing is to get you to look at the situation from a different perspective. If you can reframe your thoughts, you will often discover that your current thoughts can easily be shifted, that it is not the be-all and end-all that you think it is. It also allows you to consider the beliefs that you may be holding on to that are no longer serving you or to see beyond the veil of your current thinking. It's a handy technique to employ when you can recognize your thoughts are in this kind of negative holding pattern. For those of you that tend to stew on your thoughts, replaying them over and over, reframing allows you to recognize when a distorted thought is taken over like a weed in the garden. To reframe that intrusive thought requires an act of intention. You are choosing to shift your mind away from that thought. Focus on replacing the thought with something else, something positive, exciting or happy. It's always good to make yourself a go-to list of things that make you happy. They can also serve as a response to throw off any repetitive negative thoughts that come knocking. Perhaps, like me, you've got yourself into a bit of a bad habit of taking everything personally and have this false belief that anything going wrong around you is somehow connected directly to you. This type of personalization of thinking is unhealthy as it shifts the blame for anything and everything squarely onto your shoulders. The way to reframe your thoughts when blaming yourself is to realize you are not the center of the universe. In our own version of our inadequacies, we tend to presume that we're always to blame and that everyone around us thinks the same. In my experience, most of the time, the people I think are gossiping about me or are possibly blaming me are far too self-focused to give me and what's happening a second thought. Ironically, most of us are worried about what others might think of us and no one is thinking of us at all. And even if I know there is a situation where others might be talking or thinking about me, instead of worrying about it, I now reframe those types of thoughts by saying something along the lines of, this situation speaks more about them than it does about me, or the old famous line, what people think about me is none of my business. And it takes the blaming, people-pleasing, worrying thoughts out of my mind. I actually use reframing my negative thoughts in a broader but more intimate context. For me, reframing my negative thinking also means applying it to how I would speak to others. Would I speak to the person I love most in the world the way I speak to myself? What would the people who love me the most say to me in offering love and support? Tell yourself the loving things you know they would say or you would say to someone else. So for me, reframing is a step further than flipping the script like our second strategy offers. It's having a conversation with yourself like you would a friend who needs encouragement and support. What are the words you would say to someone in your circumstances to help them? Write yourself a letter if you need to, but really consider the language you may be using against yourself. What would you say to anyone who you might hear speak those same types of words against themselves? Our fourth strategy really builds on the previous three, journaling. Writing out your thoughts makes them visible. Journaling can also serve as a mind dump, getting the things that are cluttering your mind out of it and serving as a sort of reset. Journaling is an opportunity for exploration. If you use this technique, you will have a visual representation of where your thoughts tend to reside. It is in noticing the thoughts that keep showing up that allows you to see the patterns you're creating through entertaining those same thoughts. You can then challenge the reoccurring thoughts, trace them back to their counterparts of feelings and behaviours, and choose how to change the narrative. 
Journaling can be an excellent way to not only write down what you're thinking or experiencing now, but it also serves as a reminder of your journey, of where you've been and how far removed from those thoughts you are now. There are many different ways to journal. You can write letters from a past you perspective to the you of the here and now. It could be linear or bullet points. Perhaps you prefer mind maps or studying that one word or sentence you keep getting stuck on and exploring it further. I've tried all of these and then some. I've written letters to people who I have felt hurt, or rejected or offended by and then burnt them to a crisp or torn them into little pieces. In one of my keynote speaker presentations, I even invited the audience to participate by writing something down that was bothering them and then coming up to the front and disposing of it by putting it through a paper shredder. The act of physically destroying something we've been holding on to in our minds, I think gives us more energy towards making those changes. Our fifth strategy for changing thoughts that I want to talk about in today's episode is cultivate an attitude of gratitude. Look for the positives in life. We have a natural propensity to focus on the negatives and we often allow our negative emotions and thoughts to have more room to grow than positive ones. We give our negative thoughts more weight or more attention than our positive counterparts. This is known as negativity bias. Now this cognitive bias allows all of that negative information or stimuli like anger, fear, shame and sadness to be more pronounced and more focused upon than the quieter positive feelings such as contentment, peace, calm. By cultivating an attitude of gratitude, you begin to move your attention away from the negative thoughts and feelings that crop up and your tendency to pander to them. Noticing positive thoughts and emotions can help boost your well-being and your resilience and make significant changes in the way you go through life even when life feels hard and difficult and sad. The ability to focus your thoughts and recognize the good feelings will allow you to move away from the negative thoughts and emotions you experience more quickly. A simple way to become more grateful could be to wake up in the morning and before your feet hit the floor, you just say, thank you. If you are like me and you sometimes wake up with headaches or body aches or grumpy thoughts already on the attack, Saying thank you may seem counterintuitive. Thank you for pain? You're probably thinking, ah, no thank you. But give it a go. I started this practice a few months ago and even if I don't always start the day with it, I say thanks as soon as I do remember it. It's a simple thing, but it makes big changes. Saying thanks is one of the simplest actions you can undertake even when you don't feel like there is much to be thankful for. And perhaps right now, your personal circumstances don't seem like you have much to be thankful for. Maybe you're going to have to dig a little deeper to find it, or fake it till you make it, as one of my former professors used to say. That's why a thank you upon waking could be the place to begin. Thank you, universe, that I woke up this morning and I get another day. And before you know it, you can add in other areas of thanks. Thank you I have running water. Thank you I can hear the train track by my house. Thank you for the headache that reminds me not to overindulge my sweet tooth. Thank the inanimate objects in your home. The things around your home that make modern life easier. I thank the dishwasher, the coffee maker, the elevator, Siri. Heck, I even thank the pool water after my daily swim. Every time you thank an object, your body, thoughts or other people, even for the smallest of things, you are cultivating gratitude that will impact the way you look, feel and behave in the world. Remember, there is always something to be grateful for. You just have to choose it. So, there you have it. Five techniques to help you change your thoughts. Notice the noise, flip the script, reframe journal and cultivate an attitude of gratitude. We'll be talking more about how to get your body involved over the next two episodes. Now if our thoughts are the stories we tell ourselves, then our feelings are the language of the body. And so next episode, we wade into the murky world of emotions. 
If you'd like to get a sneak preview into the next five strategies that you can try out in your life, please come join me over in my Instagram at Reverse Reset Restore, uh, where I'll be sharing these strategies ahead of our next episode. And also join me on the Facebook page, Reverse Reset Restore as well, for more information on the strategies mentioned in this podcast and more. And be sure to let me know if you have a favorite tactic that has helped you create some positive change in your thoughts. And finally, we finish up this episode with a quote from Dale Carnegie. And I hope it helps you reflect on what happiness you are or aren't thinking into your own life. It isn't what you have or who you are or where you are or what you are doing that makes you happy or unhappy. It is what you think about.